Hey guys, welcome to the YouTube series here. We got our friend uh, Mike Salemi, and we're gonna go ahead now and kind of get in a little bit deeper. We worked together a while back with our KB4A program, uh, Kettlebells for Aesthetics, and we wanted to kind of pick Mike's brain a little bit further as far as like, you know, more advanced techniques and more uh, specifics to apply to the program. So one thing that we wanted to kind of start off with Breathing techniques, as far as maybe power, endurance, uh, what do you have in mind here uh, to talk about, Mike? So for this segment, I wanted to really discuss breathing with intention. So the way I'm going to break it down is I've got three different techniques for breathing. The first one's going to be most focused on power. The second one's going to be most focused on endurance. And then the third's going to be a combination, we're going to call it like a strength endurance breathing. Mm. Now, because breathing is so connected to core stabilization, that's why from a safety perspective and a performance perspective, if you have an incorrect breathing pattern for what you're really trying to accomplish with the bells, you could either, things could go really astray or you can really deliver and achieve a higher level performance than you ever achieved before. Right, because you notice when you get fatigued uh, going through these movements, how you know that all gets affected, your breathing especially. Yeah, so let's take, let's take a look. I kind of want to, I want you guys to see, and I want, I want to definitely show you, Justin, sure. some of the nuances of each one. So without going into in-depth mechanics on each swing, let's just say this first one is our power-based or our hinge-based swing. This is going to be closest to like a hard style swing. Okay. So for this type of swing, the most classic breathing pattern that we tend to use is as you flex and as the bell falls, it's going to be a very sharp inhalation through the nose. What we're trying to do is we're trying to charge up the abdominal cavity and then as you come through the acceleration phase, you deliver a partial pressurized exhale at the top. Mm. So it'll look like this. I see how that's a very tight, controlled exhale in that load as you're bringing it back to the body, uh, sort of filling up that chamber ahead of time and then tightening and, and releasing uh, punctually with that. A lot of pressure on that swing. Now, because there's so much pressure and you're trying to deliver a lot of force, it's not a swing or it's not a breathing uh, pattern that's designed for long duration. Like I'm almost out of breath on that type of swing. Okay. And so it's not a type of swing or that type of breathing that I would use for, let's say... You're just tightening a bit more with that technique. Huh? takes a lot of energy, yeah. right? Because you're contracting. Mm -hmm. So now if I were to use more of an endurance-based swing or trying to go for, let's say, 5, 10, 15, even up to an hour, I'm going to use a different technique, both okay. in breathing and mechanics. So what the breathing is going to look like on this is as I go into flexion, so as I fold over, I'm going to exhale. And then as I extend up, that's going to be matched with inhalation. So this is basically the opposite of what you just did. This is directly the opposite. Yeah. And I'll get into why right after. Okay. So this is what it looks like for a single arm swing. Hmm. And I see even as you go to catch it, you're a little looser with your knees and, and you're rocking through that, driving your hips as opposed to tight, powerful movements with that. Yeah, the first hinge base swing is going to be, just as the name says, hinge base. So it's going to be most, mostly posterior chain involved or backside of the body, right? The second type swing is more of a pendulum type swing. So in that type of swing, we've got more of a scooping pattern mm -hmm. and it's got a little bit more of the anterior chain involved as well. You would basically kind of uh, identify those two Difference because like so your hard style is a little bit more of that power based type of a swing versus the endurance which is kettlebell sport driven for the most part exactly and and this type of breathing pattern for a pendulum base or uh, an endurance based swing that's going to be the most conducive for long long durations right so for that because when you when you think about breathing anatomically speaking and physiologically speaking anytime the body comes out of the fetal position. So the body opens up, so it comes into extension, abduction, mm -hmm. and, um, and external rotation. That's matched with inhalation because the rib cage is opening. Mm -hmm. Anytime you exhale, <sighs> the body wants to collapse in just naturally. Mm -hmm. So what we're trying to do with this type of swing is we're actually trying to work with how our body naturally moves. Yeah, that moves. makes a little more sense. Yeah. Right? Being in an open position like that. But now let's say we want to tie in kind of the goals of both. So we want to tie okay. in endurance with a little bit more power. So for this type of breathing, this is a closer type breath that what we use in to what we use in kettlebell sport. 
So in the beginning, it might look a little complicated, but once you lay it down and you start developing a rhythm, it's my favorite breathing pattern. Um, one, because it feels very natural, mm. and then the other because it does deliver a little bit of pressure when you need it. Yeah. So I'm gonna demo so it you first. You kind of start with like a power, driven type of a breathing pattern and work your way into more of an endurance just to get that initial pendulum going? So I would usually start hinge based, okay. then I usually progress into pendulum, and then this would kind of be a third progression because it is just a little bit more complex in the beginning. Okay. So for this, we'll do a two hand swing. So for that type of swing, if you noticed, at the very top of the motion when the bell was floating, that was naturally matched with my inhalation breath when the rib cage expanded. Mm -hmm. But then, as the bell started falling, and as I started naturally moving into flexion, I started exhaling, but it, but it wasn't <sighs> everything with the whole body collapsed. It was an exhalation breath with a little bit of pressure in the, in the abdominal cavity mm. and thoracic cavity. Okay. Then, as I started coming through the acceleration phase, there was, another, there was another exhalation breath. So essentially, there's two exhales. Two, uh -huh. There's a partial exhale on the way down, but you don't let everything out, and there's a partial exhalation as you come through the explosive phase. Hmm. So you get enough pressurization to allow the spine to be stable, mm -hmm. especially during high speeds, because that's what we're really trying to do. Okay. Uh, but you also match that nice inhalation towards so the end of the motion. you're still conscious of maintaining that stability in your spine, which is obviously important going through long periods, you know, throwing weight over your head. Uh, so you're, you're actually keeping that tightness by applying those two different exhalation uh, components in there with also that, that first endurance breath. Mm -hmm. And as if, if you were practicing it on your own, in the beginning it can be really hard to do it by yourself, mm -hmm. but if you have a partner right next to you, kind of even just, even if they're not swinging. It seems pretty complex to, to, to do that, you know, and like to, to time that uh, appropriately. Mm -hmm. But once you practice it, and even if you have a partner just right by the side of you, just doing that breath, matching it, and you match them right, right next to each other, mm -hmm. uh, it can make the learning curve a lot shorter as well. Okay, so if you were to teach that to somebody like me, like, where do you start with that? Like, do you have them in a standing position and just start with the actual breathing pattern of that? Or do you have them go through the mechanics really slow and then kind of match that to the breathing? So that's a good question. I probably, most always, always I start without even lifting any bells first. Okay. So we would just mean, let's do it together. Okay. So pretend like, I'm gonna pretend like my hand is the, is the kettlebell, so it'd be. So that's okay. the pattern, and then the only difference you would do is you would add a, almost like through pursed lips. So then that would be the exhale. So you would first just hmm. get the pattern down. Okay, I and used then to coach would, like breathing through your teeth almost, like you're forcing air through, but just a little bit of uh, uh, resistance. That'll definitely work. Yeah, because we're but just yeah. trying to get just enough Oops. pressure to create that stabilization, and then uh, you'll be able to perform the movement a lot easier as you go into actually lifting the bell. Okay, great. Well, this has been very informative and something that's definitely applicable uh, going through our KB4A program. Uh, we're actually gonna have a link to that uh, over here in the box, so go ahead and click on that, check it out. Uh, it's a pleasure having you with us again here, Mike, and uh, stay tuned as we do more, uh, we get more in depth with Mike in this kettlebell series.